The cycle sort algorithm is a sorting algorithm that uses the fact that any permutation is a product of disjoint cycles to sort an array with the minimum number of writes. I'm going to use an example with cars to explain the idea, then I'll write the code and explain how it works. I'll also show what happens in different cases, like if the input's already sorted, almost sorted, or reversed. Imagine you're in a situation where you want to sort something, but moving things around is really hard work. Say, for example, you're a used car dealer and you've just got some cars in. And after you've put the prices on them, you want to arrange them into order from lowest price on the left to highest price on the right. How would you do it? If you use an algorithm like bubble sort, you're going to have to do a lot of driving. Even if you use something cleverer like quick sort, heap sort or merge sort, you still have the same problem because these algorithms move things around a lot before they get to the final position. You need an algorithm that minimizes the number of times you have to move each car. Ideally, each car should only have to move once. You want to move it out of its current space and into the new space and then never move it again. And if a car started off where it needed to end up, then it shouldn't have to move at all. Now, if you want to take a car and move it to its final position, then you're going to need to figure out what that final position is. So the first question to ask is, how do you figure out where a car's going to end up without sorting everything first? Imagine what it looks like when everything's sorted. Look at the purple car with the £6,000 price, for example. Everything less than £6,000 is to the left of it, and everything more than £6,000 is to the right of it. The trick is to count how many cars have a price lower than £6,000. And if there are five cars with a price lower than £6,000, then the £6,000 car has to be the sixth car. For example, the first car has a price of £4,000. And there are one, two, three cars with a price lower than £4,000. Which means that this needs to go here. And there's already a car in this space, so I'm going to have to move it out of the way. So what do I do with this car? Well, there are one, two, three, four, five cars with a price lower than 6,000, which means that this one goes here. And I'm going to have to move this out of the way. And this one has a price of 1,000, and there are no cars with a price lower than that which means that this goes at the beginning where there already happens to be a space. Notice what happened. This one moved here, this one moved here, and this one moved here. That's the cycle in the name of the cycle sort algorithm. In this case, a cycle of length three. Let's try moving the second car. There's only one car with a lower price, which means it's already in the right place. So we can leave it alone and move on to the next one. You can think of that as a cycle of length one. Now what about this one? Well, there are one, two, three, four cars with a price less than 5,000, which means that this one needs to go here. So I'm gonna move this one out of the way and then this one needs to go here, where there's already a space. And you can see that's a cycle of length two. You can see it's already sorted. If I keep going, you're gonna find that for each car, I'm gonna find out that it's already in the right place. We're using a theorem in group theory that says that any permutation can be expressed as a product of cycles. And what that means is, no matter how the cars are arranged to start with, you can sort them by decomposing the permutation into a product of cycles and then rotating each cycle. And that results in the minimum number of moves because 
each car only moves once or not at all. If you're wondering what happens if two cars have the same price, I'll get to that. But now I'm gonna write the code. Here we're defining a procedure called sort, which takes an array of numbers called result, and also takes the index of the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the range that we want to sort. The currently result is a small shuffled array and we're going to sort from the beginning to the end of that array using the cycle sort algorithm. The first thing I'm going to do is create a variable called cycle start to represent the index of the start of each cycle. And that's going to start off on the left. Then I'm going to create a variable called final pause to represent the final, the final position, which is what we're currently trying to calculate. And we calculate it by looping through all of the elements after uh, the cycle start to the end of the range that we're sorting. And then in that loop, if the value at that given element is less than the value of cycle start, at cycle start, then increment the final position. So let's take a look at what that does. The red is cycle start, the pink is final pause, and the blue is I. So as we go through this loop, we're looping through all of the elements, and whether, when we find one that's less than four, we increment the final pause, and so the pink moves to the right. And when we get to the end, that pink bar is in the final position that we want to move the four to. So let's do that with a swap. So we go through and we compute where the final position should be, and then we swap. So I'm currently swapping within the array, which isn't going to get us to the minimum number of writes, but I'm just going to do this for now and fix it up later. The next thing to do is to repeat this for the rest of the cycle. So now we're going to put, swap the first one into position, swap the second one into position, and then determine that this first one is already in position, but we're swapping anyway, and then we're looking at it again and swapping it again to its current position. So we're stuck in an infinite loop. We need to terminate the loop when we get back to cycle start. Now it should go around and sort the first cycle and then stop. To sort the whole array, we just need to loop cycle start through the whole range.
and that's enough to sort it, but we're not done yet. So let's go through this step by step. So first, we've got a four, and we're gonna find out where it needs to be. And it goes there, so we'll swap it into place. And now I've got this six. So we'll figure out where that needs to go and swap it into place. And then we've got a one and we figure out where that needs to go and realize that it's already there. So that's the first cycle. Then go here and there's a two and we figure out that the two is already in the right place so we stop there. Then we go to this five and we figure out where that needs to go. It needs to go where the three is, so we'll swap it with the three. And then we need to figure out where the three goes and we figure out it's already in position. And the four's already in position, the five's already in position, and so on and so on. That's enough to sort this array because all the elements are distinct. But what happens if two elements have the same value? Sometimes you can run into a problem, so we need to fix that. So if I go through here, we've got a four, and we're gonna figure out where the four needs to go. And it just so happens, it needs to go somewhere where there's already a four. Which means when we swap, we don't really change anything. We haven't made progress. And so what happens is you get into an infinite loop where you are repeatedly trying to swap this four into place and not making any progress. So what you need to do is if you find yourself trying to swap with something that has the same value, just nudge one to the right and swap with that instead. So now what happens is we take this four and we find that it needs to swap with this four, but we're gonna nudge one space to the right and instead swap with this two. Then we're gonna move the two into position, figuring out that it goes here, swap, and then we are in fact already sorted and just need to go through everything to check that. So that works, but it's not really cycle sort unless it's doing the minimum number of writes. So now I'm gonna fix it up so it does that. So the first thing I need to do is rather than swapping in place within the array, is to create a temporary variable and swap with that. And that's analogous to when you move the car out of its space and it's ready to move into the next one. And I need to replace these occurrences of result cycle start with temp here and here and here where I'm swapping with cycle start the only problem left is that even when something's already in the right place this code still writes to the array so for example here this too, it's already in place. But when we get down to here, we write it back into the array. So to avoid that, I'm gonna copy and paste this up here. This 
This has gone red because I'm redefining this because it's been defined up here. So I just want to use the one I already have. And this needs to be continue rather than brick. Now, when there's a cycle of length of one, it's going to be handled by the top loop and it's not going to go into the bottom loop, which rotates the cycle. And now we have a proper cycle sort. I'm going to explore what happens when we run it on different kinds of arrays. And I'm going to start with something that's already sorted. You can think of every element being in its own cycle of length one. Nothing needs to move, but the cycle sort algorithm does a lot of comparisons to figure that out. It is the best case for cycle sort, but it doesn't handle it as efficiently as an optimized bubble sort, for example, because even though it doesn't do any swaps or moves, it does a lot more comparisons than you technically need to figure out that an array is already sorted. Now let's take a look at the reverse case. You can think of it as a whole bunch of cycles of length two. Compare it with the algorithm you would usually use for reversing a list that swaps the first with the last, the second with the second last. It's going to do the same thing, but it takes a lot of comparisons to figure that out. If you like what you're seeing, by the way, don't forget to press the like button. Also, when it reaches the halfway point, it's done, but it doesn't know that. So just to go through it in a little bit more detail, we take the first element and we do a pass through to figure out that it's going to go at the end. And then we swap. And then we have to take the element we took from the end and figure out that it goes at the beginning and put that in place. And then we do a pass on the second element to figure out where it goes and it goes second from the end. We put that in place and then we have to do another pass to figure out that the element we just took from the end goes at the beginning. And it just proceeds like that all the way. All right, let's now take a look at a large shuffled list. So it's still doing the first cycle. It looks like most of the elements in this list are in that first cycle. And now it's on a second cycle. Right. And then there's a few small cycles remaining. I wonder how many cycles there are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on this swap instruction here and step through staying on the same instruction. So this is what it looks like before I start sorting. And that's after it's sorted the first cycle. That's after the second cycle. After the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and the seventh, it's done. Now I'll try a list that's almost sorted. You can see most of the elements are already in their final position. Just found a cycle, another cycle. See, compared to the fully shuffle list, which had a few very large cycles, this is made up of a small number of really short cycles. So let's try holding on the swap instruction for this one. So that's where we start. And then after the first cycle, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth. If you found that interesting, you might like to watch my video on bubble sort or cocktail sort, 
which you can also find on a playlist with all my other sorting algorithm videos.